yes. We lost our first game. And our second game. And our third game. But on the fourth game? Okay, yeah, we actually did get on the fourth game. <laughs> From Phase Shift Games, the creators of Dungeon Drop, comes the expansion Dropped Too Deep. In this game, we're going to go back into the dungeon. We're going to start crafting our classes and choosing our race of hero and delving and creating dungeon spaces and floors. From there, you're going to be gathering armor as well as weaponry and gold and treasure chests and all sorts of good stuff and avoiding monsters. There are going to be a plethora of different types of monsters in the game, whether they be the basic goblins, which you're probably used to if you have the base game, or the large and in charge boss monsters that will drop once around in the game. There's some old friends and some new friends that have come into the game, as well as some interesting new cubes that will help you better yourself while in the dungeon. If you have the solo mode for the game, you're also going to have the cooperative mode for the game, and of course the base game, which comes with all new content, such as classes, races, and new quests cards and on top of that the group quest cards for the cooperative variant of the game there's a ton of new stuff in this game that i can't wait to show you down below show you everything that comes with the base game as well as the new expansion i'll talk about the base game a little bit but we already have a review for that one which you can check out down below link in the description as well as the new content and what the cooperative variant has in store for you and then we'll come up and i'll discuss my review of dropped too deep the dungeon drop expansion welcome to dungeon drop the deluxe edition as well as the dropped too deep expansion i'm gonna cover pretty much everything because i haven't seen a lot of this stuff from the previous prototype i got from just the base game so let's just go ahead and get into it so you can see there's a lot of stuff in this game if you haven't played this game or haven't seen this game before i'm going to cover for the most part what it is and how you play it these are health markers that will indicate not only your health but also the tracking in which you will be uh sustaining yourself so for instance this dark mander is going to have a certain number of health and you'll be basically putting these on there and taking damage you definitely want to be careful though you do not want to die in this game these are your initiative markers and turn order markers which will determine who goes first second third and fourth and when you take your turn and finish you'll simply turn it over and it will indicate that you finished your turn you're also going to get some unique new meeples. These are characters that you can rescue in the new expanded version of the game, the cooperative version. Basically, you'll be putting these in with these small uh, little cubes here and rescuing them from the dungeon because there are certain quests that will require you to rescue them. You have player turns or player aid cards that will have not only the player's turn, but also the types of pillars, monsters, these solo items and treasure items that come in the game. And two unique special types of the gems or shiny purple cubes as well as gelatinous cubes and these basically can be almost anything each of these has its own unique rules and you simply need to read the card to follow how, how along how it functions because generally they'll replace certain cubes or go into this extra thing here this over here is the epic teamwork card which i also didn't try out before but what happens with this is it allows you to use these characters here and on your turn you'll be placing these guys uh, when it's not your turn you'll be placing these guys down into the dungeon in certain rooms in hopes that your opponent will take that room and if they do you will be scoring points on this teamwork track and up to a total of nine points every time somebody selects the area which is your room which is really really nice these are actually the deluxe edition tokens very, very nice as well. Over here, we have our classes and our race. We each are going to select one of these at the beginning of the game, and we'll be able to use either of these abilities during your turn. It'll have their health, it'll have their initiative, which will determine turn order, what type of ability it does, as well as what type of ability the specific class does. Everybody is also going to get a quest card, and in the expansion, it comes with a bunch of new ones of these, as well as, of course, in the expansion, it comes with a bunch of these as well. But these are basically going to determine what you get as far as scoring goes, at the end of the game for the uh, the non-cooperative mode the competitive mode of the game and in the, in the cooperative mode you won't be utilizing these but instead you'll be utilizing these these are the quest cards and these are going to have specific requirements on them for you to do and on your turn you can do up to three of them because basically you're going to put these guys out onto the field and when play is a player's turn if they ever accomplish the goals of these of these cards here they will simply take these and depending on the type of 
game you're playing, whether it be easy, hard, whether it be two, three, or four players, will determine how many of these you need throughout the rounds. Maybe you want to just simply collect two relics, or basically uh, three clear gems in a single room, or just simply get five clear gems all together. And sometimes they'll have multiple choices for you, or simply only one. You have to redrop three cubes on your turn. And certain cubes are now going to get redropped. There's a bunch of new cubes in the game that are going to allow you to pre prevent yourself from taking damage, as well as give you certain benefits. They're single time usings like potions. Uh, as well as, of course, the Magical Shield, which will let you prevent damage from an entire monster. Speaking of monsters, the coolest thing in this game are the large boss monsters. At the beginning of every round, whether it's the cooperative or the competitive mode, the player initiative order is going to take one of these guys from the deck, reveal it, and then they're going to drop it into the dungeon, and uh, that is going to basically have an effect in some way. And whenever you drop these guys, this is going to trigger every single one of these monsters that are in play. So there might be a multitude of these big baddies out on the field. And whenever a new one joins, bazinga, you're going to have both abilities trigger. They also do damage just like a normal monster would. And they can provide you with bonuses to scoring. And they are just devastating to deal with. So there is a ton of new stuff in the game. Now, the basis of this game is fairly simple. You are going to take all the small cubes, and it'll tell you in the rules what types are small, and you're going to shuffle them up into this thing here, and then from about six inches away off the floor, off, off of the floor of the table, you're going to drop them down. I'm going to go ahead and drop them down softly because I'm using actually way more room in here than I probably should, but I only have so much room here. So I went ahead and dropped these guys down here. And as you can see, now we have the dungeon. Now, you're also then, after, after you do that, you're going to take all the larger cubes and you're going to put them into this box here. So you'll put them all like that. And you're then ready to begin the game. You'll have a class, you'll have a race, you'll have a quest. And on your turn, it's rather simple what you do. You're going to explore by drawing a specific number of cubes, cubes based on the number of players from this big stack here. You're going to drop them down into the dungeon and then you are going to act. To act is to use one of your abilities and it could be something as simple as flicking a cube or as moving a cube on top of another cube. They do it's a whole bunch of different things you can do. This one says reveal two random cubes from the box and then return them. You may flick one cube of either type. So I pick out two from the box here. Okay, I'll choose the key and then I get to flick a key. So there's certain abilities for all of these characters that will give you some sort of benefit. Finally, you're gonna loot. And how do you loot? It's very, very simple. You're going to look at this board here, <laughs> and then you're going to determine what makes or consists of a room. And these are the pillars of the dungeon. So for instance, if I wanted to form a room, I would need to make a triangle out of these guys. One, two, and three, that's a triangle with these specific cubes, in which case I'm going to then connect them with imaginary lines and everything that those lines touch and everything inside becomes mine. A lot of these are treasure or gems, and they're going to give you a benefit. Others are monsters, which will take which will deal damage to your hero. You'll take these and put these off onto your player mat, and then you will pass turn and let somebody else do it, and it'll rinse and repeat. Once somebody's taken their turn, they're done. Like I said, though, at the beginning of every round, you're simply going to draw one of these cards and also drop it onto the field here in some way. Additionally, we have these forbidden pillars here. These forbidden pillars will be exchanged for these guys here, and when these guys hit the field, basically they'll count as pillars, so you can go ahead and utilize them in a room if you wanted to. And whenever you do utilize these in a room, any monsters that have abilities on the field will trigger. So use these guys at extreme caution. So let's take a look at some of the quests here. Now this one here is an X hero meeple has been collected where X equals one or more the number of players in the game. Uh, collect five blue gems or three blue gems in one single loot. Or a huge monster without using a magical shield. Ooh, that's challenging. One of each gem type or two of each type of gem depending on whether it's a single loot or not. And so on and so forth. Basically, the game will continue playing if you're playing the cooperative mode. If you get a certain amount of quests complete before the game ends, you win. If not, you lose. And if you're playing the base mode of the game after everybody has had a turn after three rounds, the game will end and you'll trigger the ending by scoring points based on what you have. Certain gems will be worth certain things based on your end game 
this quest here. And you'll also have a benefit of gaining points from collecting keys and collecting chests. And ch chests are basically these guys here. And if you have a key on a chest, you can roll that and score that number of points, which is actually amazing. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Dropping cubes onto the board and securing a nice room and gathering those all up. Additionally, of course, after playing a couple of games, utilizing the super teamwork guys here, which basically means when it's not your turn and before somebody chooses a room, you'll place this guy down somewhere. And then if they make a room that surrounds that guy in some way, you'll score a point. So it's a good tactic to use. We'll just pretend like he's green. And you can constantly keep scoring points when it's not your turn, which provides an extra unique benefit. Uh, let's talk about all the monsters. We'll talk about all the cool stuff in this game, all the new expansion stuff up above with my review for the game Dungeon Dropped and see if it still lives up to its extreme hype, in my opinion, from the last game. Dungeon Drop was one of my favorite games from last year. It was a wonderful little party game. We played it live on stream and everyone had a lot of fun with it. It's a surprisingly interesting game because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it when I first played it because you're simply dropping cubes on the board and then you're making imaginary triangles and collecting everything inside those triangles, taking damage from monsters and gathering gems, but it's surprisingly strategic. There's a lot of game in this little dungeon box over here. Being able to kind of directly figure out how you want to gather those dungeons has always been fun for me, and when I heard about the expansion I said, yes, I want to take a look at it. And they have yet to disappoint me. Once again, another exciting addition to the game, the ability to add these big monsters in that now do unique abilities like the dragon and some new ones here too, because you have the base dragon as well. And they're going to do a bunch of cool stuff. For instance, you have to redrop the closest pillar when this guy pops and every time a dragon or an, another, another boss comes into play, the contraption place the closest monster on top of or adjacent to this guy. You're able to place cubes on top of other cubes now, which is an interesting interesting concept as well because you'll be flicking them and moving them around and whatnot. You're going to have ward drums, redrop all goblins in the dungeon. Oh, that's weird. And then you have the flame demon. All heroes take one damage unless this would remove their last health point. And so on and so forth. I won't talk about all of them, but in a single game, you're going to run into three of these bad boys here. And they function very differently and very interestingly as well. And they can be, be beneficial to you as well when playing the cooperative mode. Speaking about the cooperative mode, another aspect to the expansion, the fact that you're able to work with other players in the dungeon was something I was curious about as well. Would I enjoy it? Yes. We lost our first game, and our second game, and our third game, but on the fourth game? Okay, yeah, we actually did get on the fourth game. Uh, surprisingly extremely challenging, but really fun and worthwhile. The aspect of dexterity really comes in handy in that aspect of the game, in the cooperative mode, worrying about when to rescue what or gather what, and how you're going to be trying to get these specific items from the dungeon. And if you can't, how can you better your teammates' objectives after your turn. So if you can't satisfy the goals, you need to make sure that they can, and you have to use your own dexterity as well as your own like idea of what people are gonna try and go for on their turn. There's also some unique additional actions in the game that you can take. Um, that it's explained in the, the rules here, the very back didn't have an actual little guide here, but you're able to discard it and immediately redraw a goal card as an action instead of taking one of your normal ones. Or you can swap a treasure cube with another player, so you can actively exchange treasure so that they can accomplish their goals in the game. And sometimes you're going to want to do that based on what is available to you on the field, based on what you grab from the, the dungeon, how you drop it. Multiple times in the game, I experienced myself and my Co cooperative partners looking around at the dungeon trying to figure out the best possible combination with what is the best possible skill to use in order to get the objectives done and then I see what I need to do and all I got to do is flick the cube in the right way and I get to succeed and I fail but knowing that I had that opportunity and that it, all of it was my own fault every single time we played and we just didn't succeed or it had something to do with how we didn't play the game correctly and learning from our mistakes made this game so much fun. This is definitely a party game, something to experience with people that have never tried something weird like this, because this is definitely a weird game, but it's a great game all at the same time. There's a solo mode to the game as well, and all the extra cubes like that is a wonderful addition as well. The, the, the different forbidden pillars now that activate the baddies as 
well as the ability to drop cubes down onto the board to activate them, whether it be potions to gain you health or an invis or the ability to give it invincibility over one monster. You have armor, you have some solo items. There's a ton of cool stuff in this game. And then I think these ones here, the gelatinous cube and the shiny purple cubes were from the original base game deluxe edition, but these are really nice to put in the game as well. They, they add some unique twists and turns to the game and it feels like a dungeon. Cubes on the ground feels like a dungeon. And just for that reason alone, not even considering all the rest of the reasons why I love this game, this game yet again gets my seal of approval. It is an excellent game, one of my favorites this year once again. Oddly enough, more of the same plus a bunch of extra unique things like adding in the big monsters and the cooperative modes just keeps making this game more fun. If you have the base game, you should pick this one up if you enjoyed the base game, hands down. It's not just more of the same, it's more and additional unique nuance, cooperative modes, and additional types of tokens that make the game function differently. Highly, highly suggest this. If you don't have either, just pick up both of them. I think Dungeon Drop is an excellent game. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, if even it sounds remotely fun. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button as well. We'll greatly appreciate it. Check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, kickstarters, and more. Our live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST every Wednesday. And if you want, you can go ahead and join us on Discord as well. We do a, a weekly board game auction. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to dropping some dungeons with you. Love this game. Next time.